AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world. Our guest today is no stranger to anyone that's been around the plant-based world for a while. And he has the, been the most wonderful host of the Holistic Holiday at Home experience that happened last week, which is why we have the reason for this broadcast. So if you watch my show regularly, you know that I had a special feature of a second show every day last week as I was hosting the culinary portion of the Holistic Holiday at Home experience, which I'll tell you about because they're offering a free replay weekend and you can watch it completely for free or you can upgrade to have a package and own it for longer and have some more exclusive content. But on one of the parties, the dessert party, Robert was there and he was talking about how he was doing live fitness classes in the morning as were other of the fitness people. And people were like, we want to see that. We want to see that. So Robert said he was going to come back and he's going to do a free live functional fitness class. First explaining what functional fitness is. All I know is that you don't need any equipment. So this will be great for those that are still sheltering at home and can't go to the gym. And he's just a wonderful person and a wonderful host. And his name is Robert Cheek. And take it away, Robert. Tell us all about functional fitness. Chef AJ, thank you so much for having me back. It's a pleasure to be here on the Chef AJ show, which is turned into my favorite show to tune into pretty much daily. I never know uh, who's going to show up and it's a surprise to me and it's always a pleasant surprise. So thank you so much. And thank you for your kind words about my co-hosting of Holistic Holiday at Home. That was an incredible event. 55,000 people registered and well over a thousand people upgraded, one to 2000 people upgraded to be part of the VIP experience. And part of that was getting a chance to join in on those fitness classes that you mentioned. And uh, it's been, you know, it's been nice actually that the, to come down from that event actually and relax a little bit and take a little bit of a break from being on camera. Not that you know anything about that since you're on every single day for 155 consecutive days. But for me, a break was uh, very, very welcomed with, uh, with open arms. So functional fitness is something I've been doing for a long time. I've been an athlete my entire life. I've been vegan for 25 years, and I've been in the sports of long-distance running, even at the college level before I got into bodybuilding as a vegan long-distance runner. I was a soccer player. I was a basketball player. I was a wrestler. I even played ultimate frisbee at a fairly competitive level back in the late 90s when it was really, really popular. And, you know, to me, functional fitness always meant doing movements that you could do anywhere, anytime. So there's all kinds of movements you need in lots of sports. Like uh, you think about a squat, lifting weights, but squatting is what we do when we're playing basketball, when we're playing defense, you know, we're in a squatting position all the time. And the same with lunges, we're lunging, we're moving around, we are bending up and down and jumping. And so these are kind of the things that I do in functional fitness classes. And so I've been doing this on the Holistic Holiday at Sea Vegan Cruise for an entire decade. It's not necessarily something that I do just when I'm home and hanging out. I do sometimes when, when I'm on tour, I do uh, group workouts in the park and no equipment is necessary. People can just come and join in and be part of the fun. But basically what my whole goal is, is to train the body, you know, train our cardiovascular system. You might hear me breathing heavily even right now after doing a little bit of warming up of jumping jacks and jumping and push-ups and getting my body warmed up even before we do this, you know, class together today. So, you know, it's getting our cardiovascular system warmed up, getting blood moving, getting our muscles pumping and getting a really good experience, a really good workout, burning a lot of calories, having fun doing it in the comfort of our own homes. In my case, I'm in the basement. You'll see me come in and out of light as the, as the Colorado sun decides when it wants to come in uh, to the basement here. And uh, it's something you can do in a park. You can do in your living room, in your kitchen, in your basement, on your deck, um, or at the gym if you go there. It's just a, the idea is that it's a total body exercise that incorporates upper body, lower body, core muscles, and some fun exercises that we can do. So that sounds helpful. great. I, I won't be able to join you because I'm here, but I'd love to rewatch this and do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, so I can I can get into it anytime. But before I start, before I start, today is a special day. Today is my beautiful wife, Karen's birthday. So I want to extend a happy birthday to my wife, Karen. And I hope that all of you will also uh, say happy birthday to Karen. I posted on Facebook. You can go in and and express your, your wishes and, and positive greetings there. 
on Facebook and I will do the same on Instagram. Uh, and uh, probably Twitter as well. So happy and birthday, then, Karen. I, I just texted her and let us not forget where you met Karen. I met Karen on the Holistic Holiday at Sea Vegan Cruise almost 10 years ago. It was 10 cruises ago and almost 10 years ago that we met on the opening night, sail away, welcome party with Bridget singing. And I was on one hour of sleep. I almost didn't go to the welcome party because I had a, a, a big day the next day. I took a red eye flight to get there. I barely had any money. I just made it to the cruise. And by the end of the cruise, I didn't even have money. This is a true story, Chef AJ. I didn't even have money to get back to the airport. And Karen let me borrow some money. She paid my $11 bus uh, shuttle fare to the airport. Uh, I think it gave me $100 for lodging that night because my flight wasn't until the next day because that was cheaper. It was a rough time when I was living in Los Angeles and trying to make it <laughs> and didn't have money. And so she helped me out and she even said that later I paid her back. Uh, so that was that was nice. And uh, and the rest is history. So today is her birthday. And uh, this is my last live event uh, for a while. And then uh, we're, we're getting out of town for the weekend to go out and explore out in the wilderness that is beautiful, colorful Colorado. Nice. Well, we appreciate you doing this knowing it is her birthday. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody so, in the chat is posting happy birthday, Karen. So maybe you can show her this afterwards. Good. I was just looking to refresh and there it is. I was pulling up our live video on her laptop so I can follow along as well. So I can see myself on a, on a bigger screen. So I make sure I'm on screen for all the exercises. So let me enlarge the screen. There we go. So Chef AJ, sorry if I'm clapping loud. I'm getting excited. I'm getting pumped up. So uh, should I go ahead and get started? Absolutely. Okay, so here's, a, here's what I like to do. So functional fitness, we need to warm up first, okay? Warming up can be anything, anything from moving your arms like this, swinging your arms, to jogging in place, to doing some jumping jacks. Gonna watch the ceiling there. <laughs> do some jumping jacks, um, jump side to side. So I'll do a few of my favorites and then we'll get into some actual kind of muscle building resistance type exercises. So let's go ahead. You can participate along. I'm going to talk through it. Uh, if you like, all you need is a towel and water. If anything, other than that, we're ready to go just with our body. So what I'm going to do is back up a little bit, Chef AJ, so people can see. And I'm going to start doing some jumping jacks here. So I'm doing, you can clap at the top if you want. And you can also do modifications at any time. So if jumping doesn't work for you, you can, you can step to the side, 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 right? Yeah. So what I usually do is just get myself warmed up here. Just getting blood flow in maybe 30 to 60 seconds or so. And let me just tilt this down a little bit since I'm backed up there. Okay. All right. So, and then I do what I call active recovery, which is jogging in place. Okay. So after I finish with my jumping jacks, I'm going to come down here and I'm gonna jog in place. I'm still burning calories, I'm still warming up, but it's what I call an active recovery, okay? So you're following along at home, you're starting to get warmed up. And by the way, I have full hour long workouts in the Holistic Holiday at Home program, which you can watch this weekend. And Chef AJ is putting the links in the uh, comments, I'm sure, so you can make sure you get that, because it's a three day replay. An opportunity to watch anything you missed, okay? Now I'm gonna to go to high knees. Check this out. Knees nice and high from the side view. And you know, I make that clapping sound where I'm going all the way up nice and high. And you can step. If you can't, if you can't do the jumping, you can step like this, okay? Just really opening up those hips, those legs, getting yourself moving. And again, 30 to 45 seconds of that. Okay? So keep those, keep those high knees going. And I kind of like making that, that clapping noise. It lets me know I'm, you know, I'm doing it, whether it's jumping jacks or high knees or something else. Kind of gives me a barometer there. And if you need to, kind of loosen up in between as we're just warming up, okay? So high knees is one that I always like to do to get going. And then, Chef AJ, I like to, I like to kick my surname here, okay? I like to kick Robert's cheeks. 
So I'm bringing my heels up, bring my heels up all the way to my glutes, to my surname. And again, you can step, step, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. You can step, again, we do this 30 to 45 seconds, okay? Looks like this from the front. Put your hands there so you don't kick yourself too hard. All right, this workout is a butt kicker. Man, kicking my own butt just during the warm up. Woo! And it's okay to start breathing heavy. I mean, a lot of us haven't been doing a huge amount of cardiovascular training during this time at home. So it's okay to breathe in heavy. Just like, just like me, I may lift weights, but I don't do as much cardiovascular training. Weighing currently 210 pounds at six feet tall, you know, I'm not doing a lot of cardio, so I feel it as well. All right, so finish up. Good. And it may be summertime, Chef AJ, but I'm going to bring the, uh, the Winter Olympics into play here. All right? Got my little doggie right there. She's off the screen, but we'll make sure we stay out of her way. And I'm going to do speed skaters to the side, to the side, to the side. I'm jumping. All my weight is landing on one foot. And I can bend down, I can go fast, Whew. or I can go slow and sit into it, and sit into it, and sit into it, into a squat or a lunge type of movement. Or you can step, right? You can step, 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 step. So whether you jump or whether you step, that's totally up to you. And this is all part of the warm up to get ourselves going. All right, so good job. Those who are participating, Chef AJ, do you have an idea of, are people participating? Are they watching? Are they saying, hey, I'm doing these too, or am I just watching and taking notes? Guys, you have to answer that question for Robert. I know you're watching, but are you watching, watching, or are you participating, watching? Right, right. Okay. Hey, and it's okay either way. It's okay either way. I'm going to get my workout in. I, I don't mind. I'm doing my thing. So now what I'm going to do, I'm way back here because I'm going to do high skips. Okay, so opposite knee to elbow. So left elbow, right knee, right elbow, left knee. And I'm gonna skip, 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 exploding off my calves. So this is kind of equivalent to running uphill or running stairs, okay, from the side. Kicking up, kicking your leg up, kicking your leg up, pumping your arms, pumping your arms. And again, 30 to 45 seconds. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good, and step if you need to, step if you need to, step if you need to. Get the arms pumping, the legs pumping, the abs are even crunching a little bit, contracting in your core. That's- So Robert, we have, we have some people that are participating, some that aren't, but the people like Diane says, I'm watching and getting out of breath. <laughs> yeah, good, well, I'll be out of breath in a little while. Um, and of course, we'll get some water and stretch and all that. But keep going, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Tina loves the modifications you're showing as she has bad knees. Yes. So we're doing high skips. Look at that. I'm not off the ground. One foot is on the ground at all times right now. Modification. But it's still more than just stepping, right? Or walking in place. I'm still yeah. kicking, kicking up that knee, pumping those arms, contracting. Contracting. Good. Good. Now, again, back to center. Back to jogging in place. Or a little bit of side to side. A little bit of side to side. Our active recovery, waiting for the next movement. All right. Catch your breath a little bit. Move your arms around if you need to. Swing those arms. I even noticed my back was a little bit tight. I was trained yesterday for almost two hours. And just during those initial warm-ups, I was like, oh, my back's a little tight. So I was training legs yesterday. So all of this stuff helps. The side to side, the jumping, the movements, the warming up in general, blood circulation, that increased flexibility, increased range of motion, decreased risk of injury because of warming up. So that's all part of it. Okay. Now here's a good one. 
I gotta make sure I don't get in Ellie's way. You're a good girl, Ellie. My little doggy is sitting right in the sun. There's a sunspot here coming in the basement. You can't see her, I don't want this raptor, which is right in the sun there. So here we go. What I'm gonna do is jump feet together forward, back, side to side. Forward, back, side, 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 side. Keep going. You can also step if you need to, okay? Step forward, step back. Step side, step side. Step forward, step back. Step side, step side. Step forward, step back. You can dead yet. Keep going. 30 to 45 seconds. Good job, good job, good job. Keep warming up. Stay loose, stay loose. Great work, everybody. Keep on going, keep on going. Forward, back, side, side. Forward, back, side, side. So why do that? Now, Chef AJ, I don't know if you saw me earlier when I was explaining functional fitness. I think you were re reading comments. I was saying, look, we're doing things like basketball, right? Squatting position all the time, basketball, I'm guarding somebody. I'm going side to side, right? I'm playing basketball, side to side. Forward, and I'm guarding someone, I'm in these movements. So that's what functional fitness is. Playing soccer, I'm running, changing directions. Changing directions, forward, oh, back here, back here. You know, gotta drop to the ground. Whatever sport it is, tennis. Ooh, what's my name? What's my name? See that spike? That's what I'm talking about all day. You don't want none of this. You don't want none of this. You know, that kind of stuff, Chef AJ, that's my point. My point is that functional fitness is now you're ready for tennis, basketball, soccer, hiking, climbing, whatever, because our body is used to moving laterally, forward and back. Okay, it's not a surprise. Um, as your friend, my friend, our good friend John Pierre says, same thing, like what if you have to, you're on the sidewalk, you're gonna jump out of the way of a bike or a car or whatever, your body is ready, your body's ready. Now, now I gotta catch my breath <laughs> at 210 pounds. Yeah. I gotta tell you, you know, I was a bodybuilder for 10 years up to 195 pounds and I dropped down 65 to run half marathons. Karen and I ran a bunch together. She actually ran five, I ran four. And I'll tell you, when I first started, running long distance at 195 pounds is, is hard. And I dropped 30 pounds, even after being a champion bodybuilder. I didn't always feel comfortable with my own skin. Here I was, pretty slim guy, former champion bodybuilder, magazine covers and all that, but now I was pretty small. But I did well. I finished in the top five and every 5K that I ran and, and, I, and I just ran next to Karen in the, in the half marathons. I just stayed by her side. And I'll tell you, I met Vanessa Espinoza, who I wrote Plant-Based Muscle with, co-authored. She met me the day before a half marathon. I weighed 165 pounds. And she recognized me from 10 years as a vegan bodybuilder. She had followed me. And I said, okay, this is how people identify me or identify with me. It's how I really identified myself and felt good. You know, I felt empowered. So we trained together and I got up to 210 pounds. You know, people say you can't build muscle on plants, you know, all this stuff. I had already built to 195, dropped to 165. And literally 18 months later, I was 210 whatever that is, 45 pounds, and was the biggest and strongest I'd ever been. And I've been 200 to 215 this whole time, the last few years. And so recently, Chef AJ, during the uh, quarantine, I was running, taking the dogs for a run. I gotta tell you, I have so much respect for people who are, you know, who are a, a little bit heavier, have a little bit extra weight and are, are starting exercise. Because here I was, even as a former champion runner, former champion bodybuilder, but I was going on jogs at 215 pounds. That is a lot of weight to carry Yeah. for me, for my size. How, how tall are you, Robert? I'm just about six feet tall. Oh my God. And I used to weigh what you weighed. That's, un, that's mind blowing. Do you want so, to hear some of the nice comments people are writing? They talk about how I glisten with my sweat here. In the well, <laughs> just that um, people are thanking you so much for being here. Julie says you make fitness exciting. Uh, uh, Rose says she just started resistance training. This is perfect timing. Linda says, Robert, you're awesome. So many people saying happy birthday to Karen. A lot of people are saying when the class is over, if you could please show the doggies. They love that you kick your surname. That was very clever. Uh, Dr. 
Uh, Bukhari is doing P PX90. He says no equipment needed. Uh, people are saying, I'm typing. Does that count? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, KJ, to be fair, I was just, I was using that opportunity to talk and tell that story so I could catch my own breath after demonstrating all the basketball and soccer moves. I'm like, Robert, remember, you're not, you haven't been an endurance athlete in quite a few years. You know, your strength that you're pretty strong, but 210 pounds, you know, and not a lot of cardio lately. You got to, Pace yourself, Robert. So yeah. that's what I'm doing. So, yeah. um, and thank you for the birthday wishes for Karen. Yep. Yeah. Jean says her. that her current functional fitness is gardening, but she's going to add this to it. And and Robert, do you do you hydrate the whole time when you're exercising in, yeah, in general? I've got, I've got it right here. I just didn't, uh, you know, want to disrupt my my speaking. But no, please please do, and I I'm, I can read comments to you when that happens. Yeah. No. And, and people say they love the glistening. Oh, good, 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 good. Love the glistening and love the listening. Well, thank you so much. Let's get back to it because I don't want to stall for too long. Now I caught my breath. So, <laughs> so we're back into it. So let's do some jump squats, okay? Feet together, feet apart. Feet together, feet apart. Feet together, feet apart. Feet together, feet apart. So I like to kind of keep my hands in a, a goblet squat position. You can put them anywhere. They go out front, you know, squat, squat. I'll do it from the side. You kind of want to be like you're sitting back in a chair, okay? So here's my technique, feet together, squat. Feet together, up, squat down. Feet together, squat down. Feet together, squat down. And you go at your own pace. And if you need to, you just, you don't do the jump. You just, we'll do it from the side here. You just lower yourself. Okay, that's all for me, right? That's fine. Pretend there's a chair back there. Pretend there's a little stool, a chair, a bench. That's what we're doing here. So we're just sitting back into this chair, sitting back into this chair. Hands can be crossed, arms can be crossed like this. Ooh, good. Goblet squat style, whatever works for your spine and your posture. And if you have bad knees, bad back, just don't do it. Just take a break on this one. That's the whole thing with functional fitness or any kind of fitness. You want to do what's comfortable for you, okay? You don't want to hurt yourself. So always do what's comfortable, what you're able to do. If you have a shoulder injury, ankle, knee injury, whatever the case is, take it easy on those movements, okay? So finish strong here. Let's go. Let's go. Drop it like it's lukewarm. Come on, drop it like it's room temp. You know how it goes. Get low. Get low. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. And what do we do? Back to jogging. Good. Good, back to jogging in place. And by the way, Jeff AJ and everyone listening, you know, sometimes we think that, you know, I can't get a good workout without the gym. How can I get a possibly, how can I possibly get a good workout? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. And we're gonna get into some of those exercises in a moment. But the whole idea is that you push your own healing body to whatever level you can until it reach, reaches this, this level of stress, or threshold or tension where you can feel you are really exerting yourself and you are, you can even build. I'm gonna show you some exercises here in a little bit where you can build muscle without even using any equipment. For example, like these, like these bear crawl shoulder presses where you're pressing your head to the ground and your shoulders are taking all the work all the work. It's great for building, you know, building muscles. There we go. And so you can do that without having to use dumbbells. And I want to really uh, emphasize that, that you can do that kind of stuff. So let's jog. Let's jog. Let's do a couple more here and then we'll get into some more strength exercises. I think we're doing, we're doing fine on time here. Absolutely. So, people, people are very happy that you flexed. They wanted to see that. And you know what I noticed? You, you work out with your people. So many teachers don't work out. They just tell you what to do. Yeah. And, and often, and you may know this from the crews and Brenda Davis and even Dr. T. Colin Campbell's wife, Karen, has come to my classes that I usually do it the whole time. I'm actually trying to conserve some energy here because I just spent three, four, six months sitting at a computer 12 hours a day writing my new book and hosting host a holiday. But on the ship, yeah, I do every movement, every, every single one with people. So, 
Okay, let's now go to some lunges, okay? Lunges, what we wanna do is take a step, nice 90 degree angle here. We don't want our knee to go past our toe, okay? And we also don't want momentum and gravity to take over. Chef AJ, here's an example. You may have seen people do this. I'll go way over here in the corner, and I'm just gonna flop across the room here. Just flop across the room, like that. This is what a lot of people will do, okay? I don't know if you can tell, almost zero muscle is being engaged there, okay? I mean, it's just momentum and gravity. Now watch this. If I step, this nice angle, torso is up, looking straight ahead, and I sit, and my knee barely touches, and then I come up and step, and again, I sit down, my knee barely touches, and up again, and I step, and knee barely touches. I'm actually engaging the muscles of the quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Now watch this, I'll stand right in the middle of the screen here. So what I want everyone to do is to try that, if you're doing this exercise. Try what it feels like to step and just to sit and hold it. Half an inch off the ground. Your knee is just almost brushing the carpet or floor or a towel or whatever you have. Just hold it. What does that feel like? That is incredibly, I can tell you it's incredibly strenuous just doing that movement for 10 seconds. It is so much different than momentum and gravity just pulling me forward and pulling me down. So switch legs and I want you to all to experience that. Okay, so now I'll step this one forward and again down and hold it, hold it. I'm not touching the ground. My knee is not touching. I'm looking straight ahead. My torso is upright. And wow, wow, my muscles are engaged. Are you kidding me? Woo, woo. That is, that is the difference, Chef AJ. And that's the same can be said for squats. We don't want to just be, okay, I know gravity's pulling me down. I know momentum. When I reach a certain point, I can kind of bounce back up. I don't want to just be bouncing around. But if I can take this squat, I can take the squat and go slow with it. Oh, and hold it, and hold it, and hold it, and hold it. This is where we start mimicking exercises in the gym with equipment. Because now we're doing longer time under tension, higher stress, more work for the body, okay? So keep those things in mind, all right? So experiment with those lunges, and you will notice an immediate difference. Now, you can make those easier or harder as well. And especially harder, you can use dumbbells for resistance. You can um, hold it, a static hold. You can hold this lunge for 30 seconds each leg, a minute each leg. Oh, there's Ellie. <laughs> Hi, Ellie. Yeah, we're doing lunges. We're doing lunges. No, not downward dog and upward dog, but lunges. Good girl. Good girl. So. So keep those in mind. You can also do, Chef AJ, you know, people say, oh, I want to do 10 reps, right? Count to 10. What's wrong with 20 reps? What's wrong with 30? What's wrong with 40? When you're doing body weight, I'm saying, don't use your heaviest weights you have and, oh, I'm going to do, you know, 40 reps. No, wait until you're doing body weight as you adapt and progress and start doing more, okay? So there's so many things you can do. So many things you can do. I think you might see Ellie's ears at the bottom of the screen right now. <laughs> um, so let's get back to jogging real quick. We're gonna stretch in a second. And loosen up if you need to. I still feel my back a little bit tight. So some dynamic stretching for my back a little bit. I feel it, the back. If you feel anything tight, you know, loosen things up a little bit. We'll stretch in a second. But I wanted to show you as I loosen up my back here, I want to show you a total body, a really nice, uh, explosive exercise that's even harder than squats, harder than lunges, harder than push-ups. So let's see if I can get a couple here. There goes Ellie. <laughs> okay. So Chef A, these are called star jumps because I'm going to make the shape of a star. My legs and arms are going out. So what I'm going to do is crouch down and jump up. Crouch down and jump up. Crouch down and jump up. Crouch down, jump up. This is a total, it's kind of like a burpee, but it's just an explosive jump. Good. So if you're at home, give that a try. 
I believe you can fly. I believe you can touch the sky. What is the next line? I, I, I think about it. Think about it every night and day, something like that. Yes. Spread your wings and fly away. Exactly. Like exactly. So let's do some of those. Let's do those star jumps. I got to watch the ceiling here. Whoops, I touched it. I touched it. There we go. Touching the ceiling with every jump. <laughs> so while you're doing those, Chef AJ, people always ask me about Vegan Strong and what Vegan Strong means to me. And, you know, we're a nonprofit organization and our slogan is plants have all the protein you need. And so this is what the, the back looks like for the t-shirts and the tank tops and the hoodies. And I wear these all the time and they're veganstrong.com because when I'm in the gym, when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm picking out produce, when I'm loading up my shopping cart, when I'm out and about, when I'm, you know, when we do use airplanes, when I'm traveling, I, I like to share this message. Plants have all the protein you need because it makes people think, wait a minute, here's this guy, it doesn't matter who you are, but I'm just saying me. Here's this guy, he's in decent shape, you know, he's pretty strong around the gym and he's wearing this, this is his message and people commented, comment on it all the time. They say, wow, I didn't, I hadn't thought of it that way before. Or you know what, come to think of it, I'm not vegan, but I use a pea protein powder and I do this and that, and this is my favorite plant-based protein. And then there's a conversation. And then if it comes up, like you, Chef AJ, you're vegan since 77. I'm vegan since 95. That's still a long time ago. Yeah. That's you know, you know, Robert, I loved your post on Instagram about Mr. Rogers and whether or not he would wear a mask. And it just reminds me because I do the same thing as you. I oh, well, not right now, because I think people watching probably know I'm vegan. But whenever I go outside, I always have something on me, like whether it's vegan earrings that Linda Middlesworth gave me or a vegan T-shirt or now with the mask, which are a law where I live. My mask is huge and it says vegan since 1977. And I have met more people since wearing that than anything else, because people stop me in the parking lot. Of, the, of Trader Joe's and asked me about it. And last night I met a lady who if I didn't have that mask on, she never would have talked to me. And she says, you're vegan since 77. I go, yeah. She goes, well, I'm 75 and I just became vegan three years ago. So I'm meeting the coolest people with having a message. Well, Chef AJ, I appreciate that. <laughs> and I appreciate that you like Mr. Rogers. And you know, <laughs> Chef AJ, you're unprocessed. I like you just the way you are. There's no one in the world just like you. And that's true because you are unprocessed. You are SOS free and you are my friend. And I thank you, Chef AJ, for being, for just your being you. And thank you. Thank you so much for acknowledging my Instagram post. That you, made me feel good. If you only had a red sweater on, it would be perfect. I've been well, telling people that Robert sweater. Cheek, Robert Cheek is the Mr. Rogers of the plant-based world. Well, I appreciate that. In fact, I have my Mr. Rogers t-shirt right over there. I really do. But I also have this one because you write books, Chef AJ and I write books. And I always like to remind people to make America read again. Open up a book, do yourself a favor and learn, learn something new. Hey, Robert, I just, I don't mean to change subjects, but as long as I got you on the air, I, I know you sell a lot of books and a lot of eBooks. You, if you have any holiday specials, you know, I'm doing a special show the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And maybe you, you want to come on as a small business. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for mentioning that, Chef AJ, because I wanted to be, and notice I'm, I'm moving, I'm letting other people get, catch their breath too. Um, but I'm jogging in place a little bit here. This is kind of in lieu of our stretching period. So we're doing fine. Um, Chef AJ, uh, that's when I decided I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be an author. And I wrote a bunch of books back then. And when I was in high school, I had a, a one on one writing coach. I mean, I wrote a hundred page children's adventure book. Sorry, children. Am I still there? Yeah. I'm sure I didn't get lost there. Okay. Um, you know, children's adventure book. I wrote when I was 17. I took writing classes in the community. Your sound is breaking up. Your sound has started to break up. Just publisher. Robert, for some reason, your sound and, has started. Uh, I went on to, you know, uh, four books and become one of the most prolific self sold over a million dollars worth of books, 60,000 copies at about $20 each and toured the world, Australia and Asia and Europe and the Caribbean and 
Canada and all over the U.S. And and that was just a you know a testament to to setting a goal and, and doing something that I really wanted to do since I was little. And the perseverance that um, doesn't always work out the way you want it sometimes, and it takes some time. You know, uh, touring around the country, sleeping in my car, I couldn't afford a even a Motel Six. Sometimes I had to just find my ways to keep going and keep writing and keep trusting the process and hoping things would work out. And eventually they did. And then I just signed a book deal with the second largest publisher in the world, Harper Collins. And that book will be out in the new year. And it's, it's exciting because it took me my, my whole life, you know, I'm 40 now, but I started this when I was eight. And, and that's just a reminder for people who are on any kind of journey, whether it's, uh, you know, a brand you're trying to build or, or weight loss you're trying to achieve or weight gain you're trying to do or, or build a business or become your own personal best and whatever it is that moves you, sometimes it takes a while, you know, and it takes that consistent effort. So uh, thank you, Chef AJ, and I probably will have some specials That's around the great. holidays. Yeah. I, I own all my books. Let me know, because we're going to do a two-hour special the Sunday after Thanksgiving. I'm calling it Small Business Sunday. And there's a question from C. Robert, if you really have to eat more protein to build muscle. Um, no, no. Uh, it comes down to, I'm glad you asked, we can talk about protein, we can talk about sports supplements, all that stuff. It comes down to total calorie intake. You know, of course, the better the foods, the healthier the foods, the better off. But when it comes to building muscle, it takes resistance training, so some sort of resistance weight training, um, and, uh, and adequate calories, oftentimes a calorie surplus beyond what you're expending. You know, just slightly, just sli slightly uh, beyond what you're expending throughout the day. And you can use things like uh, the Harris Benedict calculator or Harris Benedict equation to determine how many calories you expend every day based on your gender, age, height, weight, and very importantly, activity level. And then use Chronometer or MyFitnessPal to document your calorie intake just for a period of time to know where you're at. You know, I'm not saying everyone needs to count every calorie for the rest of your life. In fact, I haven't done it. I haven't counted calories in, in years, but that's how I found out, you know, what, what I needed to consume in order to build. And I've been able to do this throughout my life. Uh, go up to 200 pounds, back down to 160, back up to 215, back down to 195, you know, what, based on what my interests are and how I train. And I have, just for people who are wondering, I have not used any protein supplements since 2012, uh, eight years now. And I was inspired by Forks Over Knives and Econ Campbell to set those aside. And I haven't used any other sports supplements, no creatine, glutamine, meal replacement, um, essential fatty acids, only vitamin B12 is what I've taken over the last eight years. And, you know, I'm not in my best ever shape right now, but I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape and uh, pretty strong and fairly active and all that. And I'm 10 years into my retirement from the competitive sport of bodybuilding. And I train for the fun of it. I train to go on, on tour and train to teach people about the, the benefits and power of, of plants and plant-based diet and plant-based foods. And of course that plants have all the protein you need and, uh, and on tour with our vegan strong team and, and trying to get people to go check out veganstrong.com and see what all the recipes and meal plans and all that and realize that it, 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 it's not protein. Protein's what's been marketed, what's been sold to us, what's been overhyped. There's protein water, there's protein popcorn, uh, there's probably protein marshmallows. That, that should give us an idea of how, you know, how overhyped it is. So uh, thank you for the question. And uh, protein is a very small part of my, of my lifestyle and part, a small part of my worry or concern. And I consume about um, about 75 to 100 grams a day. And that's on a 3,000 calorie diet for a 210 pound, uh, six foot tall male. And so it actually comes down to 10% of my total calories when you do the math. Uh, and I've done the math many, many times. And it's 70% um, carbohydrate, 20% uh, fat, and 10% protein. And that's even documenting for six consecutive weeks, not six hours, not six days, but for a month and a half, um, learning more about me and who I am and what I eat. So, and I do that every once in a while. So uh, thank you for that. Um, Chef AJ, let's, uh, I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm, I'm starting to get cold here. So okay. let me, let me All right, real quick, two questions. Diane's, well, comment. Diane says, Robert, you're so encouraging to me. And uh, Nadesh says, what is the title of your next book, Robert? Yeah, the next book is titled The Plant-Based Athlete. And it's co-authored uh, with Matt Frazier from No Meat Athlete. Uh, Dr. Michael Greger is committed to writing the foreword. We have endorsements from pretty much every single person you can imagine in the plant-based world, almost essentially every single speaker from the holistic holiday at home um, has endorsed it in one capacity or another, quotes throughout the book. We've been working on it for two years now, but it's been a project even in the works longer than that. And, uh, and it should be, you know, be in every bookstore in America when it comes out and it has a, a chance to do some really, really good things. We feature a lot of athletes who are in the NBA. 
um, the NFL, uh, professional tennis, uh, professional sports of all types. I, I personally interviewed about a dozen plant-based Olympic athletes and about 20 world champion athletes. Sometimes people don't know there's Olympic gold medalists in various sports, sprinting, skiing, soccer, whatever, who are plant-based, boxing, um, lots of world champions, men and women alike in powerlifting and bodybuilding. And it's really strength and masculine sports that we associate high protein or animal protein. It's not the case. Uh, mountain biking, swimming, long distance running, it's, it's just plentiful from the Scott Jerks and Rich Rolls of the world um, to Fiona Oaks and, um, and uh, uh, so many others. Laura Klein, who's the world champion to athlete and, and just dozens of world champion athletes. David Verberg, uh, uh, Olympic gold medalist in sprinting and um, uh, Rebecca Sony, six-time Olympic medalist in swimming and so many others. So uh, we're excited about that. Um, to, to, to be able to write about a bunch of Olympic professional and elite world champion athletes, as well as, you know, our own uh, ideas and thoughts based on evidence and science. And that's how we have all the doctors and registered dietitians, Brenda Davis, Joanna Hever, um, Dr. Campbell, Esselstyn, Gregor, all those people uh, behind this project too. So it's, it's a big one. It's a big one. So, um, so thank you for that. I'm, I'm dripping sweat here and I want to make sure I, I warm and, back up. And C wants to know what kind of music you like to work out to. And Gina wants me to ring the bell for what you said about protein. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And that's, and that's the absolute truth, um, Chef AJ. I mean, I, I write so many articles for Forks Over Knives and others. That's the absolute truth that I do not believe in excess protein consumption. In fact, minimal protein consumption. I don't go out of my way to eat tofu and tempeh and nut butters. No protein powders in almost a decade. I've been the biggest and strongest I've ever been. Probably sometime last year, before I took essentially five months off during quarantine and book writing, I was in the best shape of my life before this, this thing went down. I was in, in tremendous shape. I was getting gearing up for age 40, which I turned 40 in March. And I was the biggest and strongest I've been in my life, almost a decade removed from all sports supplements, which are, at the end of the day, mostly marketing. There are some benefits to some through scientific studies that do show a, a small you know, increase in this or that. But at the end of the day, you know, we're not all Olympic athletes looking for that sli you know, slight edge. You know, most of us are weekend warriors and staying in shape for our health and for our heart and for our lungs and for our, our cardiovascular system and to prevent injuries and to increase longevity and, and to feel better. We're not trying to represent our country at the Olympic games. And, and we don't have seven figure contracts representing major sports teams and even if we did, it's shown that you can still be one of the best players in the NFL or in the NBA or in other in, in, in professional tennis, uh, soccer. We have the, the, some of the best soccer players in the entire world. Alex Morgan on the women's side and Lionel Messi on the men's side, two of the best soccer players on this planet of 7 billion people, plant-based diet. Uh, Novak Djokovic, best number one best men's tennis player on the planet, plant-based diet. He was one of the executive producers of the Game Changers. Uh, Serena and Venus Williams, especially Venus Williams, uh, who's stuck with the plant-based diet for a decade, and Serena dabs, dabbles in it a little bit. The best tennis players on the planet at the height of their, their competing when they were plant-based as well. The same for many Olympic athletes. Carl Lewis, a guy I idolized growing up. In fact, I communicated with him on Twitter just the other day, and it was like the highlight of my week or month. And you know, he won 10 Olympic medals, nine gold medals, and said his best year was the first year he went plant-based back in 1991. Um, Mike Tyson and so many others. I met Mike Tyson. I signed a book for Mike Tyson. I met Chris Paul, who's an uh, NBA Hall of Famer. He's played 15 seasons. He's currently on my Oklahoma City Thunder and uh, he's taking him to the playoffs. And uh, JaVale McGee, I met him. And he's a plant-based guy in the NBA. He plays for the Lakers with LeBron James. And the list goes on and on and on. And I'm just one guy who's been doing it for a long time who now has the opportunity to write about other people who are way better athletes, way more accomplished on a world stage than I ever could have dreamed of. And I, I, being a writer, I get a chance to express that in words. So, um, so thank you for those comments. And what was the other one? What was the other one? Well, what kind of music do you like to work out to? But blow your mind. Um, I've never, I've never listened to music working out. Um, ear, earbuds don't fit in my ears <laughs> for whatever reason. They don't fit. And so I just listen to whatever's in the gym. I could wear big headphones and put a beanie hat on to, or, you know, or something like that, or to keep them in place if I use the little ones. But I've never listened to music unless I'm home. And in which case, you know, I'll throw on maybe something like Def Leppard. That's who I hear at the gym all the time. And I met those guys too. And two, I've been backstage with those guys because uh, a third of their band is plant-based, you know, um, uh, Rick Allen, 
is plant-based and Phil Collin, who I've gotten to know, you know, fairly well over the last five years. So anytime they come to town, I get to go hang out backstage. And, and, uh, uh, in fact, I've been training in the gym with Phil Collin when Def Leppard is playing on the radio. It's kind of cool because he's one of the best guitarists in the world, long time plant-based guy for decades, Rick Allen, the drummer, same thing, plant-based Vivian Campbell is, you know, mostly vegetarian, a little bit of fish, like ha- I mean, half the band I've, I've been on their tour bus. It's they're the real deal. Def Leppard. So, um, I, I like listening to that kind of stuff, you know, um, maybe some hip-hop music some upbeat stuff but i also listen to some country music too so um music doesn't impact me is my, my point so let me do some mountain climbers here to make sure i warm myself back up okay so i'm gonna get down here and i'm gonna climb the mountain i'm gonna mount, do the mountain climbers here which is if you've ever done any mountain climbing i climbed south sister and uh, bend oregon uh i don't know what it is ten thousand something feet you kind of do some of this on your hands and knees climbing and if you want you can step you can step you can step instead of instead of jumping, okay? But this will get you heart rate get your heart rate going a little bit more and get yourself warmed back up, okay? Because we just took a little bit of a break, quite a long break. So while we're at it, while I'm down here, I want to show you this one I really like too, okay? And Ellie is my little workout partner. You may not be able to see her, but she's right there. She's a very good girl, okay? And Benny's over here too. He's sleeping on the other side. <laughs> And Karen's out celebrating her birthday with the best friend. So, uh, so here we go. This one is we're gonna get into a a plank, a push up, a plank position, and I'm gonna jump forward, back, side to side, feet together. This I love this one. Ready? Here we go. Feet together. Forward, back, forward, side. Forward, back, forward, side. Forward, back, forward, side. Forward, back, forward, side. From the side. It's gonna look like this. Feet together, forward, back, forward, side, forward, back, forward, side, forward, back, forward, side, forward, back. You get the idea. You can step if you need to also. And this will really get your heart going, okay? So if you need to, you can step forward, step back, step forward, and step to the side. Step forward, step back, step forward, step to the side. Okay, so it is a great one. And Chef AJ, all of these things are designed to be no equipment necessary and really work your body, you know? Work our arms and chest and core and legs. For example, let's do these. Let's move right along here. So we get as many exercises in as we can, and then we'll stretch and catch our breath, get some water. But yeah, let's do some shoulder taps. Just a basic push-up position, right? Pretty easy, right, Chef AJ? But you can go faster, right? You can go faster. You can do push-up in between. Push-up, push-up, push-up. There's a lot of ways to do that. So any of these movements, there's modifications to make it easier or harder. If we need to, we can um, not go the full distance on push-ups. Uh, we could be on our knees if we have to. A uh, lot of ways to do it, okay? So that is another one. Now, Chef AJ, this one I really like as well. So what I'm gonna do here, I'll face the camera and I'll do it from the side. So you can see me here. What I'm gonna do is get in a push-up position, okay? There's that Colorado sun shining through a little bit. I'm gonna go down into a plank and push myself back up. And then down into a plank with the other hand, push myself up. Okay? Now my left hand, push myself up. Now, right hand, push myself up. Back down. Left hand, push myself back up. Right hand, push myself back up. You can also do push up in between if you want. Push up. And there we go. Back down. Up. And push up. So, so many variations. Things you can do in the comfort of your own home that are gonna work your muscles. You can see I'm drenched in what is usually a relatively cool basement down here in Northern Colorado. So um, let me back up a little further so you can make sure you see that full screen. Again, down and up, down and up, down and up, and alternate hands if you like. Put a push up in between if you like. Okay, shake it out. 
because next we're gonna do some push-up variations. I'm gonna drink a water here. Woo! Hey, Woo. Robert, is, is Cara Lewis still vegan? To the best of my knowledge, he absolutely is. He seemed to suggest that in the, the Twitter comments uh, that I was showing a video of Mike Tyson, who I met um, eight or nine, eight years ago, and told me he had been vegan at the time for three years. And I've heard he's been vegan for up to 10 years. I've also heard that maybe he eats some chicken every now and then. So I never know exactly what to believe. But the fact is, he was a, maybe the greatest boxer of all time. Maybe, you know, you could talk about Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and uh, a few others, George Foreman, whoever you like, but, you know, maybe one of the best boxers ever. And now he's in, he's 54 years old, in incredible shape. He's making a comeback. So I was just sharing, you know, what a, a decade on a plant-based diet has done for, for Iron Mike. And Carl Lewis was saying, he commented on my tweet saying, just another example that it's possible. And then people chimed in, including me, <laughs> to Carl Lewis. And he said, the best year of my life athletically in the Olympics was 1991 when I became uh, vegan. So 92 were the Olympics. 91 was probably the world championships. And, and he's been on many, I don't know, many websites and, and magazines and all that. And so to the best of my knowledge, he's still plant-based. And I would suspect so because he chimed in on my, on my comment and made further comments about the benefits of a plant-based diet. So, uh, you know, he's, he's just an example, but there's also a guy named Andreas. Oh, what is his last name? It might be Voigt, something like that. I found him through Instagram. He is a, a vegan Olympic athlete from Austria, and he has the fastest 10,000 meter time in the entire world this year. He's won like all his races recently, including he's been the fastest human being to run 10,000 meters in 2020. And yes, there are still track and field competitions going on all the time, particularly in Europe. It's not like there's only been one competition. He won it. He's, um, oh, I can't remember exactly his last name. He's in my new book though. But, and David Verberg has an Olympic gold medal, you know, in the, in the four by 400 uh, relay. I met him in person actually. And um, it, it was a really cool experience out in Los Angeles. And so there's, there, there are plenty of amazing plant-based athletes out there. And that's what people are gonna learn. In my book, there's many world champions. I mean, all kinds of women uh, in powerlifting and um, Olympic lifting and bodybuilding and, um, and endurance running, especially women, uh, have all kinds of world records, including Guinness world records, Fiona Oaks and so many others. And um, sometimes I'm spacing on their names because I interviewed so many people, uh, somewhere between 100 athletes, and we featured maybe 60. And, um, and it's been about a month and a half since I've submitted the book and, and uh, I'm still in touch with a bunch of them, including Scott Jurek and others. So it, there's just, there's so many plant-based athletes out there. And that's what we're trying to show that you can be the best in the entire world in soccer, the world's most popular sport. You can be one of the best in the world in, in, in cricket, in, in NFL football, in ba NBA basketball, in women's tennis, in men's tennis, in women's skiing and snowboarding. And I met, there's this, there's this brother and sister in um, uh, uh, Shauna, uh, Hill and Kevin Hill um, in, in Canada. And she has a bunch of world records in, in triathlons. And then he has Olympic Olympic medals and uh, X Games gold medals in, in his sport, in snowboarding. And, you know, people like that, you know, siblings who are the best in the world at what they do. And, and they oh, and guess what, Chef AJ? They've been vegan since birth. We have a number of athletes who have been vegan since birth, not vegan when they were 34 at the height of their career or vegan at age 28 when they were the best in the world. People like Kevin and his sister, uh, the Hills, have been vegan since birth. And Jahina Malik, a, a professional female bodybuilder, you should have her on your show, vegan since birth. And, and, and others, uh, Fiona Oaks, vegan since five years old, and she's in her 50s now, and is the, one of the best in the world, has four Guinness World Records in endurance running. And incredible shape in her 50s. I just saw her in, recently in, in London and in Los Angeles. Um, so many others, mountain biking, uh, uh, Sonia Looney, another one you should have on your show. She has her own podcast as well. And she's had like Rip Esselstyn on her show and all that. And um, a woman Anybody named, you introduce me to, Robert, you know I have them on. Yeah, a woman named Darcy Gaither, G Darcy Gaither, who kayaked, you ready for this? She kayaked 
the entire length of the Amazon River, 4,000 miles. It's tied with the Nile, like literally tied as the longest rivers in the world. They're each like, you know, 12 meters longer than the other, depending on how the water flows. So they both claim to be the longest rivers in the world. Um, she kayaked that, it took her five months, um, uh, which is incredibly grueling um, to do that and very dangerous. And she did it. Uh, and she's been plant-based for 20 years. And, uh, you know, amazing stuff. But um, let me see a few more notes here I want to get to. Um, yeah, let's get a couple more if we can real quick as we, as we kind of cool down here. I want to show um, some push-up variations like these, uh, like these Spider-Man push-ups where we're going to, you know, instead of a regular push-up, if you can see me there, regular push-up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring my right knee to my right elbow. Oh, there we go, like Spider-Man climbing a wall. Left, there we go. And these are tough. They're, they're harder than a regular push-up. So another variation of something you can do from the side, Chef AJ is gonna look like this. There we go, and up. There we go, and up. There we go, and up. All right. And I wanna repeat those bear crawl shoulder presses because those are so awesome. We're gonna get feet are pretty wide, hands are a little more than shoulder width apart, not too far out in front of you, and not too close to you touching your toes, but right where it feels like a great distance to go down and do shoulder presses. I think you can see me there. There we go. And these, honestly, Chef AJ, those feel like I'm using dumbbells. Like they're just, they're so, they're so tough. There's a doggy making a cameo. Yeah, do you want to say hi? Come here. Oh, do you want to go upstairs? Come here. Come here, Ellie. Ellie, come here. Come here, you good girl. You good girl. Want to say hi? Look, people want to see you. You're famous. Look how little you are. Look, my hand is as big as your body. See? See? Pleasure to meet your acquaintance. You're seven pounds, right? And you're a very, very good girl. You are. That's sweet. Right? She's actually going to get a recognition in my, in my new book because she sat at my feet while I wrote the whole thing. So for months on end, she kind of follows me everywhere. Benny is more follows Karen everywhere. But let me show you Benny. Come here. He's deaf, so sign language. Come here. Come here. This is like good boy. You see my hands. Oh, that's so cute. That means good boy. Good boy. Come here. He's been deaf ever since we got him. Rescued him 10 years ago. 15 now. I know you've met him. Come here. Oh, he's awesome. Good boy. He's stretching. Hold on. He's stretching. And now he's rolling over for belly rubs. You silly, silly little boy. Here he is. Here's, here's our 15 year old who we describe as the heartbeat of our family. Oh. He's always been deaf. He is very much attached because he can't hear. So if we leave a room without telling him, he gets scared and runs around the whole house. Where'd you go? He waits by the door until we get home. You're a good boy. Yeah, he, he, we have to, we put a little bed out no matter where. If we go out the garage door or the front door, back door, he needs a bed there so he knows to wait for us to come back to that door. Um, he loves to bark at other dogs and bark at anything he sees, especially anything with wheels, bikes, skateboards, scooters. Here, I'll, I'll do some stretching. You can help me stretch. There we go. So he's a very good boy. So anyway, Chef AJ, um, I don't want to take too much time, but we've gone, you know, we've gone over a lot of exercises. Um, just, I just want to summarize for people who are joining late and wonder what, who's this incredibly, incredibly handsome, shiny man on the screen. And well, I, I'd be happy to tell you. Um, so my name is Robert from uh, veganbodybuilding.com and I'm the director of Vegan Strong at veganstrong.com, a nonprofit organization that travels the world and now travels from our couch to our chair to show that plants have all the protein you need via the computer these days. And so um, I've been vegan for 25 years. And what I want to do sh was show you today some exercises that you can do anywhere, anytime. I know, I know that many of you resonated with those lunges, real lunges, you know, real powerful lunges, real squats, real push-ups, and all kinds of variations of push-ups and shoulder presses and abdominal exercises and all of that. And so these are things you can do on your own time in the comfort of your own home, anytime of day, any place, 
and get a tremendous workout. And I'm sweating now more than when I'm at the gym, just pressing weights and sitting on the bench than pressing weights and sitting on a bench. And yet if I do the pushups correctly and dedicate as much time as I would in the gym, I can still get a great chest workout or great shoulder workout or arm workout or whatever the muscle group that I'm training is. So, you know, I'm in my forties now, I got to get some, some more of that tan. I ran out of tan here staying indoors, but um, you know, just like everybody else, just trying to discover the best version of myself and exercise helps with that. So, uh, so I, I appreciate you having me. And if you do have some questions, I'd be happy to take them. I also want to remind people again, there is a replay for Holistic Holiday at Home, which I was one of the co-hosts of. 55,000 people joined, 200,000 plus video downloads. Some of the best information you will find anywhere. It's all free this weekend. Chef AJ has the link in the comments. And maybe if you don't mind putting it in there again for people who are scrolling, to please go check it out. Um, we dedicate a lot of heart and soul into this for months. So much hard work, some tremendous information. And I hope you will join Holistic Holiday at Home and watch as much free content as you can over the next three days. And if you feel uh, compelled to upgrade, you will get not only a year worth, but they just, they just announced lifetime access to 90, I think it's 90 hours of presentations. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's my workouts. It's workouts from Giacomo and Danny, from Corinne Sutton. It's cooking demonstrations by Chef AJ and so many others. It's mindfulness classes, yoga classes, and about 40 hours of keynote lectures and, and Q&A presentations from the best in the business, from Dr. Ornish to Esselstyn to Campbell to Clapper to Barnard to Juliana Hever and Brenda Davis and Dr. Blyweiss and Tracy McWhorter, who's lovely and was just on your show the other day. And Robert, when does it start, people are asking? Does it start tomorrow? Yes, Friday through Sunday. And if you click on Chef AJ's link, you will see the countdown. It starts in you know, zero days and X number of hours. And it's totally for free for three days and get as much out of it as you want. If you want to upgrade and get all the bonuses, the eBooks and courses, um, I've you know donated all of my eBooks. That's just comes, you know, free. And that alone is, you know, $60 value um, for that. So I do want to thank Holistic Holiday at Home. And I want to thank you, Chef AJ, for also being the co-host. And I want to remind people, if you do want to share the message about Vegan Strong, and plants have all the protein you need, you can do that at veganstrong.com as well. And we are a nonprofit organization that appreciates your support so much. And I've got a, uh, I've got a wife with a birthday today and a trip out of town tomorrow with the family, with uh, the dogs and, and Karen and, um, and a plant-based dinner tonight to look forward to. And uh, I'm happy to drink some water and stretch and, and answer any questions. Um, and if, but if you need to go, Chef AJ, I will respect your time and the well, audience's time. No, I, I, we'll see if there's any more questions. And I'll just announce that uh, tomorrow we have two shows again at 11 a.m. And we'll be on time tomorrow because we're going to be broadcasting from Mexico, from the kitchen of the spa Rancho La Puerta with the executive chef, Chef Reina. And she's going to be using one of my favorite ingredients, purslane. And then two o'clock, all the way from Australia, we have a plant-based physician named Malcolm McKay. People are just saying how much they love the virtual cruise. And uh, yeah, this is great, Robert. Thanks for really explaining that really all you need is your body. Yeah, and I hope I, I you know, I know we got to talk in there for a little while, but I hope, uh, you know, hope the demonstrations were helpful that, you know, you just need to do some jogging in place and sprinting in Play some jumping jacks, some jumps, lateral movements, and realize that all of it contributes to your overall health and wellness. And the more you do it, the more calories you burn, the more fit you feel. And uh, Shafiq, I also wanted to say something uh, kind of to end with, something that a lot of us face, including myself right now. You know, I notice sometimes people, I don't know how, and I don't know how you feel about this, but sometimes people use the wording like, you know, I'm fat. And I want people to realize that nobody's fat. You have fat. You know, I, I don't just walk around saying, I'm muscle, I'm organs, I'm skin, I'm this. No, I have muscle, I have organs, I have skin, I have fat. I don't have to identify as that. I'm, I'm much more than just my, how I outwardly see myself, you know? And so I know that because I, in this program, we had a lot of people who were trying to lose 100 pounds or lose 50 pounds or reclaim their health. And I just want, and sometimes I see the wording like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm that, or I'm fat. And I just want to just, that's just my perspective is that you're not fat, you have fat. And there's ways to combat that through diet, lifestyle, exercise, attitude, uh, approach, consistency, maximizing 1,440 minutes we have each day. 
And please let me be a resource. I've, I've been, um, you know, I've been what would even be, you know, clinically obese before when I've injured my spine, which is why I was a little bit, you know, sensitive to my back today uh, and didn't exercise yet. I still ate huge amounts of calories trying to maintain this 200 plus pound bodybuilder physique, not exercising for six months at a time. And I got you know, pretty high body fat. And uh, I can, so, and I've also been very small, 120 pounds when I became vegan. I was 89 pounds in eighth grade. I was a very small kid, but I wanted to get bigger and stronger and be a, an athlete someday. And I was able to do that. So um, if I can be a resource, my books, Shred It and Plant-Based Muscle have helped a lot of people. Uh, those are on Amazon. They're also on my website, veganbodybuilding.com. And again, on veganstrong.com, you can submit any questions and we can get back to you. If you have questions about diet, lifestyle, exercise, and uh love to be of service. That's what I decided I was going to dedicate my life to, to doing, to be of service to others in whatever ways I could. And writing was what, uh, what compelled me to, to, to do this in the first place. I, I just wanted to write books and, and vegan lifestyle helped me get to that point and, and helped me excel as an athlete and uh, travel the world and meet wonderful people like you, Chef AJ, a decade ago and see you in various cities and countries around the world on tour. And I uh, I appreciate you having me on the show for what feels like the third time in a week or so. I know. It's always, oh yeah, you co-hosted last week. People love you, Robert. And thank you so much for dedicating your life to serving people and getting them to eat plants and be healthy and be strong. And that's sincere, Chef Aja. That's, that, that is what I want to do. And, and rescuing dogs and, and giving to others and, and, and just being of service and giving is always better than receiving. And that's, and that's where you get the biggest joy and the the, the biggest fulfillment and um, the most rewarding aspect I think is helping others. And uh, so what I always say, you know, is, uh, is uh, eat well, train hard, smile often and lift others up. You know, I think reaching down and lifting others up is one of the, the greatest things that we can do. And you never know who needs, who needs to be lifted up, <laughs> you know, absolutely. I mean, I'm any human, so just one last question, Robert, sure. won't you be my neighbor? Well, chef AJ, you can always be my neighbor. And I appreciate you and I value you and I like you just the way you are. And I thank you for having me on your program. <laughs> and I thank you, Robert. And I thank all of you for watching because without you, there'd really be no program. This would just be a recording. So come back tomorrow and Robert, come back anytime. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.